Namen von Ihrer heutigen Wiesenplatz. Sie wünschen euch jetzt wunderschöne, unterhaltsame Ferien. Besten Dank und auf Wiedersehen. In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean lie nine islands, the Azores. This Portuguese archipelago, formed by volcanic activity, is known for its rough landscapes, hot springs and marine life. In this video, we are exploring the largest island of the group, São Miguel. Join me as I share with you my seven days on this unique island and show you all the cool spots and experiences. Our journey starts at the airport, where after landing we catch a taxi and make our way to the hotel. We chose a very budget-friendly hotel. If you're interested in checking out this hotel, you can find a link in the info box down below. After settling in, we head into the city to explore São Miguel's capital, Ponta Delgada. Even from here looking up you can see the lush mountains and it's easy to understand why São Miguel is called the Green Island. São Miguel is a small island. You could easily drive through it in just a couple of hours. To explore the island in your own pace, it's good to have a car. Still, my friend and I decided against renting one and chose a combination of public transportation and taxis. For our trip to Setsidades, we take a taxi. Later we find out that there are also buses to this location. We then rent a kayak to explore Lagoa Azul and Lagoa Verde. Legend claims that the twin lakes at Setsidades were created by the tears of two lovers. Once upon a time, the daughter of a wealthy king met a shepherd and they fell deeply in love. However, their love was forbidden by the king, who arranged for his daughter to marry a prince. Before their separation, the princess and the shepherd met one last time. Their tears formed Lagoa Azul from the princess blue eyes and Lagoa Verde from the shepherd's green eyes, forever uniting their love. Of course, there's also a less romantic and more scientific explanation for the different colors of the lakes. It's that the reflection of light creates these variations. Instead of calling another taxi, we chose to walk to our next destination. We were saddened to see most of the cows of livestock farmers chained here. For navigation in the city and on trails, I highly recommend the app maps.me, which proved helpful in many situations, because it works without Wi-Fi. On the way, we are treated with these views. As we hike, clouds begin to multiply. The weather on the island can be a bit unpredictable due to its tropical and rainy climate, often experiencing all four seasons in a single day. Therefore, it's a good idea to always carry your raincoat with you. But you don't really have to worry about the cold because the temperature never drops under 10 degrees. This is where we are coming from. We trek about 10 kilometers to reach the starting point of Miradora da Boca do Inferno or the Hell's Mouth viewpoint. And wow, what a gorgeous view. No, seriously, if you're lucky with the weather, it's a really cool viewpoint. This is how it could look like. On day three, we are filled with curiosity and excitement. The Azores are renowned for whale and dolphin watching, as these islands are an essential stopover for various species of migrating marine mammals. So higher chance the sightings come in spring, so we are already over the theoretical uh, migratory season for these larger species. This does not mean there's zero chance
Today we spent the day in Ribeira Grande, exploring and relaxing at the beach. Praia do Monte Verde has big waves, making it popular among surfers. On day 5, we have plans to go swimming with dolphins. Well, that isn't possible today because of the stormy weather. We are pretty bummed out, so instead we take the bus to Villa Franca do Campo. Above the town, perched on a hill, lies Hermina Genossa, Signora da Paz, the Church of Peace. Once a shepherd discovered a figure of Virgin Mary in this cave, it developed to a place of pilgrimage. Because it's already afternoon, we have to forgo a visit to the church and instead make our way straight to the island. On our way back, we stumble upon a religious festival taking place. It's interesting to witness the locals celebrating their religious traditions in their colorful attire. Today we're going to Caldeira Velha. The natural swimming pool is heated by hot springs and situated in a lush forest area. To be completely honest, we were here two days before, only to find out that booking online the day before is required. I would also recommend booking the first slot at 9 in the morning to avoid crowds and have the best chance of experiencing the pool at its warmest temperature. We then head to Praia de Santa Barbara. It's a stunning beach known for its impressive cliffs and consistent Atlantic swells that make it popular among surfers. On our last full day, we take the bus to Funash. On our program is the Terra Nostra Park, where we swim in orange, 38 degrees warm water. By taxi, we then go to the head of the Salto do Brego trail. Salto do Brego is a popular waterfall located in Faial da Tea, a small village on the southeastern coast. To reach Salto do Brego, you'll hike through this amazing forest trail that runs along a river. It feels like a jungle. Another one for the books.
my seven days on the island of São Miguel come to an end, I'm reminded of the lessons we can learn from traveling. From adapting to unexpected changes, to overcoming everyday challenges, the island serves as a powerful teacher. The Azores are a magnificent destination, and if you do decide to visit, please travel responsibly, take care of the land and trails. When you travel with an open mind and heart, the world becomes your classroom, and every destination has a lesson waiting to be learned. Until next time, stay happy and keep exploring.